Hello everyone, it's me again, and it's time for another thrilling edition of Comics and Cocktails and Cats. We're adding things to the acronym. Um, the thing in which I get drunker than I reasonably should on a... When, it's not Wednesday, it's Saturday right now. Technically it's Sunday. Funny how days work. And um, talk about comics. Now you may have noticed the more astute of you in the audience. And I haven't posted these in like three weeks. Because I got behind on school. And yeah. So today we're not actually talking about comics. We're talking about a comic movie. Making this the first ever comics and cocktail movie special featuring Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, um, some of you- oh, hi kitty. You wanna be on the table? You're not supposed to be on the table, but you know, you can like watch for a bit. Um, some of you may not realize because if you're coming to this from YouTube and not from my blog, some of you may realize not realize that I'm like a super big Hank Pym fan. Um, and I fucking love Hank and pretty much any character who's even like tangentially related to Hank. So, especially Janet and especially, um, well mostly Janet. Mostly Janet. Um, so, this movie I kind of, hmm, mm, 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 mm. from the start I, I went into it kind of expecting to totally hate it. And I only like mostly hated it. So that was kind of a you know, positive. I love this cat. This is Catkin, by the way. That's her name, but we always call her just Grey Kitty. Did you get water on my table, Kitty? What? Are you, like, drooling on the table? Why are you doing that? Um. Mm. We have another cat called Black Kitty because she's black. But her real name is Thrakosad, Devourer of the Unborn. And this is Katkin, that's that's the whole name. Um, so Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. Alright, so. Let me... I watched this on Thursday and I was gonna do comics and cocktails that night. But it was... I had to get up early on Friday morning so I couldn't do it. So I'm kind of like trying to like recall it as I review it. And it's not really working out. Mmm. This is probably going to have spoilers, by the way, so if you haven't seen it, you probably don't want to watch this video. I have no control over what I say. Well, I do. Oh, uh, I didn't introduce today's cocktail. Today's cocktail is rum and coke, because I thought I had- I was going to do either- let's see. I oh, I was going to do tequila and this drink called Rosa de Jamaica, or Jamaica, I'm not really sure. How you're actually supposed to pronounce that in that title. Um, but basically there's this, this type of flower that grows in Jamaica that you can make like this sort of tea out of. You, you boil it and then it makes it into a juice drink. I usually call it flower power juice because it's a juice made out of flowers. But its actual name is like Rosa de Jamaica. Um, it tastes really good, but we ran out of it. So, I was gonna put like tequila or vodka in that. Um, and I think it was tastes good because one time my, my brother-in-law made that into a margarita. Um, and it tasted really good, but we don't have any of that. So today it's just rum and coke because that seems the easiest. Kitty, you can't have any. You're, you're too young. You're underage. Um, anyway, so Age of Ultron, like most MCU movies, it's a well put together movie, as, especially, like, special effects wise, because, you know, hot damn Ultron, um, you know, like, visually, it's a very enjoyable movie. Um, writing is about average for MCU. Like, yeah, about average. But it does have this problem where Joss Whedon decided he was going to ignore, like, a bunch of plot points that happened in other MCU movies. Like, um, Iron Man 3, I, 
Tony gets rid of all of his stuff, all of his robot, all of his, um, all of his, um, Iron Man stuff, and then now he's like, I'm gonna make robots. I'm gonna make a big-ass robot who can make more robots and control the world because the, I need a suit of armor around the world. Um, that, that was, a, by the way, the, like, lamest line in the entire movie. A suit of armor around the world. No, Tony, that's not how it works. We already have a suit of armor. It's called the atmosphere. Um, oh, I wonder if I, Kitty will play with my hair. Kitty, do you see this? Do you see this? Do you want to get it? Do you want to get it? Do you want to get it? Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Do the thing. Do the thing. Oh, 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 oh. oh it worked. Ah, oh, did you see that, guys? I don't know if you saw that. Um, so, okay. I should talk about Age of Ultron, shouldn't I? I don't know. I, I feel like I should have something to, like, represent Age of Ultron, but I don't. So this kitty is Age of Ultron now. Hello. Mm. Okay. So. It's just. Okay. Number one. Changing Ultron's creator is like making Luke's father somebody else. That That's what it's like. It's like. If in Star Wars, instead of Darth Vader being Luke's father, it turns out that Palpatine is Luke's father. That's what it's like. Only if you, like, switch who's good and who's bad. That's what it's like. And everybody's like, oh, it's just an, it's a, it's an alternate universe there where Tony made Ultron instead of Hank. And it's like, no. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um... So right away from the very premise, like, you can't make Ultron work with somebody else's, somebody else making him, because the, a big part of who he is is based on the fact that he was made by Hank, and, you know, um, not by Tony, and, yeah, um, and, you know, but see, the, the, and the biggest problem is that Ultron still talks like he was made by Hank. You know, he talks about, you know, how humanity is, you know, creates things to destroy things and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, how humanity's biggest threat is humanity itself. Which isn't something Tony ever said. Tony was worried about aliens. He was like, oh, the aliens are coming to get us. Bruce, we have to make a robot to defend us. And Bruce was like, then the only threat to humanity would be humans. And Tony was like, yeah, but we'll get rid of the alien problem. Alien, ow. Ow. Okay. Um, so to make sense as a character, Ultron should have been like, I will destroy space. But... You know, Ultron's I hate humanity thing, um, especially in Avengers Source My Heroes, comes from Hank's thing about, you know, this is like a flawed system, there's people hurting people instead of helping people, and blah blah blah, and these are problems that I don't know how to fix, and I just want to make peace. And Ultron's like, well, the only way to make peace is to get rid of these, like, pesky human problems. So look at my, look at my arms, by the way. Um, I'm very proud of these. They're like mini guns. Like, I have, like, no... I, I'm a very skinny person, but, like, my arms, they're, like, all muscle and, like, nothing else. Not very much muscle, but, like... I, I can... I can deadlift a baby, so, I don't know. Oh. Let's see. Oh, the kitty abandoned me. She's sitting on her tree over there. Oh, by the way, this over here, this is like my brother-in-law's collection of board games. Which some are actually over there off camera. But, you know, I get so distracted by my arms sometimes I just want to like flex everywhere. I have a friend who's a bodybuilder. And... Sometimes he'll like be like just like flexing and 
When he flexes, it's a lot more impressive because he, like, has, like, five muscles pop out and, like, veins that are, like, the size of rope. And it's like, whoa. But, yeah, sometimes he'll just be, like, flexing. He, he has one thing that he calls a horseshoe over here somewhere. Uh, for any of you who knows bodybuilder and stuff. He, he's pretty, he's, like, three times my size. And it's really impressive. Um, but, yeah. Mm. Hmm. Anyway. There were good parts of the movie. There were. Don't get me wrong. Um, Hawkeye was good in the movie. And I surprised... I actually liked this subplot with Hawkeye's family because... I mean, it's totally... It has nothing to do with the comics. I, You know, this is totally out of left field, but I enjoyed it. Um... I enjoyed the Nat and Bruce bits, but they, I, I wish they'd been more established. Um, I think a lot of the movie's problems could have been solved by having a montage in the beginning instead of just a fight scene. If you'd done a montage, you could have like done like really quick, um, snappy establishing things of, you know, oh, look, this is these two doing this, this is these two doing this. This stuff is happening. Instead of just, like, jumping in and going, Tony suddenly has, like, 50 billion suits and robots, and Nat and Bruce are in love. Woo! How long has this been going on? We don't know. We never answered that question. Um, obviously there are problematic elements, but I'm not... Like, the whitewashing of the Maximoff twins bothers me. Ooh. Um, but Pietro's characterization was really good. Like, mm, it, it was good. I don't know how true it was to the comics off the top of my head, but I enjoyed it. He was very enjoyable. Wanda, I didn't hate as much as I expected to. I'm kind of just like really neutral on Wanda. I was expecting to really hate the portrayal because, um, from like, all the promotional stuff, I was expecting her to be Joss Whedon's patented crazy wafy chick, like, um, River Tam, but Marvel version. Um, let's see. Vision I enjoyed. Um, yeah. I feel like they ran the language joke too much into the ground. Um... Hmm. Also, the biggest problem with the movie, besides Ultron being the worst written villain ever, like, I was never once intimidated by Ultron. And I, I was never once worried by Ultron. I never once thought, wow, this guy could fuck the Avengers up. I... There, there was no suspense with Ultron. He was just like, Ugh. Ugh. that was Ultron. He wasn't doing anything. He didn't like. He just. He wasn't scared. Okay, watch Avengers: Earth to My Heroes, the TV show, and watch that Ultron compared to this Ultron, and that Ultron. Okay, it's a, a show, a kid's show. And that Ultron is scary-ish. I mean, he's not really scary because it's directed at kids. It's not really scary to me. But the thing is about that Ultron is he's a force of nature. Quote, unquote. He's, he's like a hurricane. You can't reason with him. You can't discuss things with him. He doesn't feel anything. He just has a point that he's going towards. And he's going to go toward it. And that you cannot stop him. And in Earth's Mightiest Heroes, it takes, like, all the Avengers are fighting Ultron and losing one Ultron, one Ultron. And in the, and in the movie, um, you've got all the Avengers fighting, like, millions of Ultrons and they're winning. Like, they're just tearing through the Ultron bot, uh, all, like, all the little Ultrons. Like, they're nothing. I mean, it takes Cap, like, three punches. But Thor takes, like, one punch and, like, five of them are dead. So it balances out somewhere along the way. 
And it's just... Okay, but the worst thing about the movie is that it's like... It's the same... It's almost the exact same plot as the first Avengers movie. You know. They find that there's trouble a brewing, and so they gather together. Although they're already kind of gathered together in this one. And then there's tension between the ranks, and are we a team or are we a time bomb? I don't know. I, I, I never really got what a time bomb is. I'm pretty sure it's a number of people who have collected together and don't work well together. And they're just like, oh, we're not very good at being a team. Because now we've been played with our... Because Supernatural Force X played with our minds. Like, in the first Avengers movie, it was, like, the staff slash Loki, maybe. And now it's Wanda. And so then they have to, like, come together and accept their differences and work together to fight this army of CGI monsters in a really impressively filmed fight scene that lasts the entire third act. And then they win. And we're done. And, you know, nothing is learned. Nothing is lost. I mean, yeah, people died in both movies. Like, Coulson died, but he brought got brought back for his own TV show. And Pietro died, but he's probably going to come back. And if, even if he doesn't, fans are just going to conveniently ignore it forever. Um... It's just, it's the same plot, but with robots instead of aliens. And I'm sure if Joss Whedon was still with the, was still doing Marvel movies, which he's not, because praise Jesus, I'm sure his next one would have like zombies or something. Because, you know, he's just like checking off the same storyline with different monsters. It's not... It's not good writing, it's not good directing, it's not good anything, it's just... From a critical standpoint, it's not a good movie. It's an enjoyable movie. Like, I'd probably watch it again. Um, although, there were a couple of times where... Let me see if I can like show you this without like... Wow, that was a really loud sound. So there were a couple of times where I just like sank down in my chair, like like this, and then one time I sank all the way to the floor, all the way to the floor while I was watching it in the theater, just because I was just like, this is so bad, this is so wrong, but I'd probably still watch it again. I wouldn't spend money on it again, but I'd probably like if it, when it comes on Netflix, I'll probably watch it again. It's an enjoyable movie. It's a good like summer flick. But it's not, like, a good movie. It's not well written. It's not... It doesn't do anything new. It doesn't do anything interesting, really. It just... It, and it's not... And it's not your favorite characters from the comics brought to life on the screen. It's your favorite characters from the comics mutilated and stuff on the screen. Yeah, Kitty agrees with me, too. And this has been, like, a really long episode, partially because it's, like, a special and partially because I just have so many uh, oh, I'm just I'm so mad and this isn't even the first time that there's been a Marvel movie that made Hank Ultron's creator instead of Ultron instead of Hank what this isn't the first Marvel movie that's made Tony Ultron's creator instead of Hank because they did it in that next Avengers movie with like the baby Avengers who are like kids of different of random pairings of Avengers um, even though some of those pairings had mothers who said they never wanted kids, cough Janet and Hank, and why do they have a baby named Henry Pym Jr.? They wouldn't. They would not. Um, but in that movie, Tony created Ultron, um, if I recall correctly. And, but it wasn't so much of a bother in that movie, because Ultron was just there to be left to fight. They didn't, like, go into his character. And in Age of Ultron, they try to go into his character, but it doesn't work at all because they don't, they don't know what they want to do with his character because they took away one of the fundamental aspects of his character, which was who created him. 
And they're just like aggressively ignoring the fact that Hank exists and aggressively ignoring that the next Marvel movie is going to be Ant-Man. Which, because most of the Marvel movies, they like shout out to the next movie in like the end credits. Um, you know, or they somehow shout out to it at some point. Like in Iron Man, one of them, they had Thor's hammer right before Thor 1 came out. They don't do that with this one. They just like, oh, whatever, we're gonna talk about Thanos some more. Like, okay, we get it, Marvel, you, you, you don't like Ant-Man. Why are you making him a movie and like completely ignoring the movie and making it a shitty movie also? Like it hasn't come out yet, but I assume it's shitty. And it, okay. I've been talking for almost, like, for over 20 minutes, and, um, I'm not gonna edit this down at all, so I should probably stop talking eventually. I'm just very angry. I'm very angry. Um, but Ultron is really hot, so, um, the one thing, the one thing that I request of Marvel is they make Jocasta, still with Janet's brainwaves, because I want her acknowledged in the MCU somehow. They make Jocasta with a similar design to Ultron, so that I can have a hot lady robot instead of a hot dude robot. Yeah. So that's that's my, my one request. I don't know why Ultron's so hot. Um, I honestly don't. I feel like people should not want to fuck Ultron, but that part where he kneels over Claw, I think he kneels over Claw, and he's like kneeling and he like leans down into the panel, that was really hot to me. Like, I would do that to other people. Um, and my girlfriend, who's a like, total sub, would be the other person involved in that. And, yeah, um, I'm gonna leave before this gets really weird, so if you have any, like, comments, questions, concerns, um, requests, suggestions, uh, I don't know what else I usually say here, hopefully sometime in the near future I'll go back to regular comics, cause School ends for me on Monday, after I knock out this stupid group project. Um, and then, hopefully I'll be able to like catch up on comics, like, cause right now I've got a stack like this big that I need to catch up on. And, yeah. Hopefully once I do that, I will be back to regular comics. And in a couple months when Ant-Man comes out, I will try to like, do this again with hopefully not 23 minutes of talking. Bye!